love the work today. Aren't you appreciative of his presence? said, so I turned and went down from the mountain while it was ablaze with fire, and the two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, I saw that you had sinned against the Lord your God. You made for yourselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. You had turned aside quickly from the way that the Lord had commanded you. So I took the two tablets and threw them out of my hands, breaking them to pieces before your eyes. Then once again, I fell prostrate before the Lord. For 40 days and 40 nights, I ate no bread and drank no water because of all the sin you had committed, doing what was evil in the Lord's sight and so arousing his anger. I feared the anger and wrath of the Lord for he was angry enough with you to destroy you. But again, the Lord listened to me and the Lord was angry enough with Aaron to destroy him. But at that time, I prayed for Aaron too. Also, I took that sinful thing of yours, the calf you had made, and burned it in the fire. Then I crushed it and ground it, to in, uh, ground it to powder as fine as dust, and then threw the dust into a stream that flowed down the mountain. And I'll stop there. Our uh, text this morning is giving us a description of when the Israelites were about to cross the Jordan River and and begin their conquest of the promised land. They uh, had been through Egypt. They had been through all of the struggle there and all of the slavery there. 
they uh, been across the wilderness for 40 years and now it was coming up on the time that they were about to enter into the land that God had promised to give them. And uh, as they would experience uh, some mighty victories during this uh, conquest and during this upcoming time, Moses wanted to warn the children of Israel of some dangers that would uh, arise and not necessarily in the dangers of those around them, but in the dangers of those within them. And, and so uh, he, he began to talk to them about self-righteous behaviors and, and uh, things like that, that he, they would start to begin to look inwardly instead of upwardly. You know, sometimes there's, there's danger in just looking outwardly at the enemy and how bad things are. There's dangers in just looking inwardly and say how good we are. And then there's, uh, uh, but the blessing comes when we're looking upward and say, God, we're nothing and they're nothing. Amen. And, but we're the difference in us and them is we're looking to you and we're asking for your help. And, and so, so he was trying to warn them against these, these things that might happen. They might begin to think that they were invincible and that they were defeating their enemies by their own strength and by their own abilities because God knew that uh, though he had promised them the land, there was victories to be won. That, that's kind of like salvation if you think about it. Uh, uh, you've been given salvation and thank God for that. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior and you're trusting him as your Lord and, and, and walking in him and trusting in him, that's a wonderful thing. But there's victories to be won. There's there's daily battles you face. There's, there's struggles that you go through. There's... Uh, uh, difficult situations and, and and so Moses was aware of that and he was trying to uh, warn them it says you're going to win some some great victories that look like some impossible things but you're going to want to look inwardly and say that's because of who we are and all that we are but he says I want you to not do that I want you to guard against that because he knew just as we know human nature is such that people can sometimes have thoughts of being better or more deserving of God's blessings than, than others are and say, well, God's going to take care of this and he's going to, but the truth is we just need to say, I need to continue to trust in God. As we've been singing about today, I need to put my confidence and my uh, uh, trust in the Lord so that I don't allow uh, uh, self-righteousness and self-centeredness and and all of that to enter in. And so so it, it becomes a like a spirit of vanity that arises. And when a spirit of vanity begins to arise, there's there's going to be disobedience to the Lord's uh, um, commands that's soon to follow. So we've got to be careful not to allow ourselves, as I believe it was Paul or one of the New Testament writers says, that we shouldn't think of ourselves uh, more highly than we ought to. It's a, there's, there's danger in that. And so we've got to be careful in that. And, and even Paul said, I was facing this thorn in my flesh and I asked the Lord to deliver me. And the Lord says, no, my grace is sufficient uh, uh, to keep you and to help you in that. And so he says, it, it has kept me humble. I've, I've remained humble because there's been a messenger of Satan that's been uh, screaming at me, coming at me uh, constantly. But but I, I've remained humble. But he says, I've found my weak, weak times in my life, but in my weak times, I can look to the Lord and he is my strength. Can somebody relate to that this morning? Amen. It was for this reason that Moses was standing among the people to warn them against self-righteousness, disobedience, and all this rebellion that was... Uh, uh, evident and that was uh, uh, that was uh, in place in their parents' lives. They had fallen uh, to a lot of that after they had left Egypt. And so Moses is now just looking back and retelling a story of what had happened in the book of Exodus. Now in Deuteronomy, he's saying, I just want to tell you of what happened to your parents and your grandparents, the previous generation. I want to tell you what they went through and how what they faced and, and where we are today. And so he began to, to lay all this out. He's standing before this second generation of believers and uh, he's telling them, you've been through the wilderness, you've seen the Lord's mighty hand, you've seen what God is able to do. And so it's, it's vital that you keep trusting him. The first generation died out in the wilderness. Uh, they never experienced the 
uh, uh, promised land that God had uh, laid out for them, for that nation, because they had rebelled against God. And, and, and Moses knew that the same fleshly nature that was uh, 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 in that generation could arise in the second generation, just like it did in the first. And so he warned them against all of that. He says, I want you to be careful not to allow your heart to get too highly exalted or your own mind about yourself being too highly exalted. He's, he's warning against it. He says it bring, comes to rebellion it leads to disobedience, it leads to all this. But on the other hand, he instructed them the importance of spending time in God's presence. How do we keep ourselves from uh, becoming too uh, conceited and too arrogant and too prideful? We have to spend time in the presence of the Lord. We have to run to the Lord's presence as often as we can. And, and we've got to be aware that that the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy today just like he was back in the days when Jesus declared it. And so I want to tell you this morning that it's so important that we keep coming back to the Lord's presence. Amen. I'm old enough now and been in ministry long enough now to sometimes feel like I, I talk to a generation who hear what I'm talking about but have never experienced the presence of God in a very real and powerful way like they've heard about. And, and I, I can remember as a young kid growing up hear, hearing some of the old timers testifying of miracles that they had witnessed and how God had uh, caused healing to take place right in the midst of a, of a prayer line, right when people were uh, uh, being prayed for and goiters just began to disappear and, and uh, heart conditions to, began to be healed and uh, uh, miracles were, uh, people were brought back to life and just these miracles and I remember as a little kid looking and listening to them and saying, God, I'd love to see that now. Why is it happening now? Why? And I was just a child wanting and hungering for that. I wanted to see God do some wonderful things like I'd heard them testify about. And so this morning, I'm trying to tell you that if you've not experienced the presence of God, don't just say, well, it must just not be for me. And when I'm talking about the presence of God, I'm talking about that those moments and those times in His presence where nothing else compares. There's, I mean, just in an instant, suddenly you know that you've broken through to heaven. And suddenly you know that your prayer has reached the throne room. And suddenly you just feel a pipeline, so to speak, of the presence of God that just fills your heart and just begins to stir your heart. I came up here uh, yesterday just to turn on the air and get things ready for, for the service today. And I, I just took a little time in the altar and just began to pray and just began to walk around in the sanctuary and praying. And I had one of those instances where I just felt the presence of God just show up in a very tangible way where He just uh, let me know that He was here in our midst. And I, I love those moments. There's nothing in the world like it. Matter of fact, I start, I'm starting to feel a little bit of that right now. So hang on. Amen. But I'm just trying to tell you it's such a wonderful thrill when God uh, uh, moves uh, earth out of the way and says, I'm just going to invade earth with my presence in the hearts of my people and powerful things can happen miraculous things can happen yes, amen. and so Moses was in this situation and he's he's dealing with this um, uh, with this subject of, of what can happen what can go wrong so he's warning them he's doing all that but he's saying but I want to tell you there's something that you've got to do you've got to keep going back to his presence you've got to keep uh, moving to his presence uh, it is it is a um, it is a very important thing to spend time in the presence of God. That's why we meet for prayer every week. That's why we go beyond a service time just to say we're just going to just call out on the Lord where it's not uh, anybody uh, uh, front and center. It's just the Lord. It's calling out to the Lord and saying, God, we need you. We need you. We need you. Amen. Because there is a great magnitude and great importance and, and a great uh, power that comes in the presence of the Lord. And so I, I want to associate this fire experience that Moses had with the necessity of our time, uh, of the necessity of the presence of the Lord through prayer, through reading the Bible, through coming to church, through worship, through all of these things that we can do. Um, we don't have to wait till Sunday morning to be in the presence of God. Matter of fact, in the day and hour that we're living in now, we don't need to wait until Sunday morning just to 
we, we, I need him on Monday afternoons and Tuesday, Tuesday midday. And, you know, I, I need him throughout just, sometimes I need him at three o'clock in the morning. I, I just need his presence. And, and, and so I, I want to tell you how important it is to keep returning to the fire. He said, I was coming down while the fire was still burning behind me. And, and that's a, a, a powerful image to see is the smoke rising from from the uh, 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 from the mountain top that was was consumed with the presence of God, and so so Moses. Uh, let me just go ahead and get get into this. Moses was spending time in the fire of God, and, and when you spend time in the presence and uh, of God in the fire of God, it will contrast those uh, uh, with a heart for God and those who don't have a heart for God. Like we see the difference between Moses and and the the nation of Israel at that time. While Moses was communing with God, the people were conforming to the world around them. They were just giving in and just saying, this is how uh, we're going to, to do things. Moses was receiving the covenant from God while the people were turning their backs on God. Moses was praying while the people were playing. And I, I kind of, uh, I loved, used to love reading the old uh, late British evangelist Leonard Ravenhill, who once said it like this, the pastor who is not praying is playing. The people who are not praying are straying. The prayer closet allows no showing off. Amen. There's no room for our agendas. There's no room for our, uh, for our flesh to glory in His presence. We must come into those times when it's just, uh, we just move ourselves out of the way and say, God, I need you. I need your presence. I need your fire in my life. And time in the fire will prepare you for what's going to happen in front of you. And so outside of the fire, Moses got to see that believers will react on emotions and react on uh, repeating the opinions of others and living by the influences of those around them and their, their society around them. Aaron tried to justify his actions. If you look back in the book of Exodus during this time, he began to make excuses uh, in uh, Exodus 32, 22, he says, you know how prone these people are to do evil. Uh, and then he accused everyone else of forcing him to sin against God. I did it because of them. It was, it was them that caused me to sin. And then he accused Moses. He said, but you were taking way too long. You just were spending way too much time. We decided you weren't coming back. So we had to come up with something to do. And then lastly, he turned it all and began to mock Moses and began to, to just uh, say something like this. He said, I, I, I want you to understand. He said, I just said, okay, let's just take all of our jewelry and just throw it into the fire. And look what happened. A golden calf just formed out of nowhere. And I can imagine Moses think, do you, looking at him, you think I was born yesterday. What, what are you talking about? It didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. You know, I could, I could go off on a, on a trail there. It, things don't just happen. You, you keep feeding and you keep allowing things. So, so we've got to be very disciplined and very careful that we guard ourselves of what can just quote unquote just happen. We've got to be careful that we uh, are faithful in little things so that we can be uh, faithful in much. And so in the fire, we see these things. Moses was spending time in the fire. He came down and saw everybody else in such compromise and such uh, wickedness that he began to have to deal with that. In the fire, believers will be led by the Spirit and they will proclaim what the Lord is saying and what the Lord has declared and they won't be moved by the trends of society.